Hi there. Let's take a look now at a topic that is uh, a little bit dry, potentially boring, but actually really important when it comes to understanding how businesses are organised. So bear with me for four or five minutes as we take a look at the different forms of business. And we'll focus here on what are known as private sector organisations, private sector businesses. In a separate video, we look at the difference between private sector and public sector. But for now, the first thing to remember is that there is a, there is a difference between what are known as unincorporated businesses and incorporated businesses. Unincorporated and incorporated. And the two main types of unincorporated business are sole traders and partnerships, AQA students, you don't need to know about partnerships. Uh, and then incorporated businesses, there are private limited companies and public limited companies. Now we're not going to look at public limited companies on this video, we're just going to focus in particular at the difference here between unincorporated and incorporated businesses, the, the key differences between the two. Okay, so let's move on to that then. Now this is important, so it might be worth pausing the video for a minute just to jot down some, some notes here. Unincorporated businesses, the essence is that the business is the owner. There is no legal difference between the owner of the business and the business. And as a consequence of that, the owner of the business is liable for the business's actions, including its debts. The owner of the business has what's known as unlimited liability for the debts of the business. Most unincorporated businesses are sole traders, but as we'll see in a second, you can also be a partnership. The difference between unincorporated and incorporated is that with incorporated businesses, the company exists. It is a real legal personality. The business is the company. The business is the company. The company has owners, the shareholders but the owners are not liable for the debts of the business. They have what's known as limited liability. The liability is limited to the amount that they invest in the business. They can lose their shareholding, but they're not liable for the debts of the business. And the vast majority of incorporated businesses are private limited companies. With me so far? Okay, so let's just quickly go through these three forms of business. We won't spend a lot of time on it, just to jot down the key points is all you need to know. Sole traders to start with, by a distance, the most popular type, most common type of business form, where a single individual owns her own or his own business. That doesn't mean to say they can't employ other people, of course lots do, but the key point is, the bottom point here, the sole trader is personally responsible for the business's debts. A sole trader has unlimited liability. So in terms of benefits dis uh, benefits and drawbacks, advantages, disadvantages, really easy to set up a sole trader, dead easy to close it, to set up again. Paperwork is fairly minimal, fantastic, dead easy, very informal. The big downside is unlimited liability. As a sole trader, you are responsible for the debts of your business. And other downsides include it's a little bit harder to raise finance, potentially. And of course, if the owner... It becomes ill or loses interest, then the business suffers because the business and the owner are one and the same thing. Partnerships. Again, don't forget AQA students. You don't need to know about partnerships. At Excel students just need to have an awareness of these. And it's basically where two or more people decide to set up a business and run a business based around a legal agreement called the partnership agreement, which, which explains how they're going to share the profits of the business, how decisions will be taken what happens when there's a change in the partnership and so forth. But again, the key point about partnerships is that they have unlimited liability. They are unincorporated businesses. So again, it might be worth pausing the video if you want to jot down some benefits and drawbacks of partnerships. Um, take a little bit longer to get set up. You need to have a partnership agreement, but generally fairly easy to set up. Uh, the downside for partnerships is the unlimited liability. Okay, and finally, therefore, moving, we've dealt with unincorporated businesses. Let's just spend a minute looking at these incorporated businesses. And the key here, we've mentioned it already, is that with incorporated businesses, the business is a separate limited, a separate legal identity, a separate legal identity. Um, the company is the business. Now, of course, the company has owners. The owners of a company 
are shareholders. But the shareholders are not the business. They simply own part of a business, which is the company. And that has big implications if the business fails, because the owners of the company, the shareholders, are not liable for the debts of the business. They have limited liability. So that's the key point about limited companies. And it's the reason why so many are created as a great way of protecting shareholders. It's the company which is the business shareholders have unlimited liability. So I would say that the uh, it's the left-hand side of this table that's the most important. Yeah, for sure. Setting up a company has a little bit more admin and paperwork. And of course, you have to disclose information. But way outweighed, completely outweighed by the advantages of setting up a limited company. The protection that shareholders have of limited liability. And also, it makes it easier to raise finance because a limited company is a more stable form of business. The business continues even if the shareholders change. There we go. That's quite complicated. Hopefully useful though. Just a quick overview of the different forms of business.